Big tech, social media, once the great liberators, got a little power and became the great enforcers. How very progressive and how very instructive as a warning for the future. It's clear that the people who run these powerful companies don't think liberty is such a great idea, at least not for anyone but themselves. The likes of Google and Facebook and Twitter have shown through their persistent, aggressive political censorship that they would be quite at home helping to run a police state if required, a progressive police state, of course, where democracy is fascism and free speech is hate, and the people who work for these companies, who are all so progressive and highly educated that they never have to think for themselves, would be more than happy to enforce that police state. They're proving it every day. Censoring the world from Silicon Valley, they're living the anti-American dream. Nothing is more anti-American than censoring freedom of speech. Of course, we all know that the First Amendment, which protects free speech, only applies to government censorship and not to private companies not even to monopoly private companies who control and censor what has become the public square and who collude cartel-like and use their muscle to aggressively shut down competitors who support free speech, an idea they find offensive and threatening. Now, of course, it would be wonderful if these dangerous bigots were subject to, if not the First Amendment, then to some kind of regulation given the unearned and unjustified power they now wield. But really, this is just a nasty symptom of a much deeper problem that's been building for a long time. And that is that none of the people who work for these companies have any understanding of or respect for the First Amendment and the foundational values it represents because they've been taught from an early age not to understand or respect it. They're all products of a progressive education where they've learned that free speech is a thing to be feared and crushed because feelings come first. They've also learned that American values are intrinsically racist, that theirs is a culture to be ashamed of, and that everyone who isn't white, male, and or heterosexual is somehow a victim of everyone who is and needs to be compensated for it forever. And this is not exclusive to America, of course. Everyone who's been through a Western education system for the last generation or so has had their thinking influenced, if not shaped entirely, by this kind of corrosive, anti-Western, self-hating, progressive PC bias, which has been allowed to permeate our society like a poison gas. Because we have allowed its proponents to falsely claim the moral high ground and to get it into children as early as possible, ensuring that they grow up with all the correct self-destructive progressive assumptions, uncritically accepting the victimhood narrative of oppression and privilege and, above all, guilt that makes them the bad guy, along with the racist double standards, the divisive manufactured identity grievances, the deep ideological loathing of Western civilization and everything it stands for, and of course, an acquired safe space reluctance to listen to any idea that they disagree with. And all of this is very much acquired. Where do you think Generation Snowflake came from? Those losers didn't just materialize out of nowhere, they were taught to be that way by ignorant teachers and ignorant professors, educated stupid people who think they know best because they don't know any better. Teachers who take their progressive politics into the classroom, as many do, have no right to call themselves teachers. It's a serious betrayal on a par with being a crooked cop. You disgrace the profession and you destroy people's confidence in the profession. And if you are a student who's afraid to disagree politically with a teacher or a professor in case it affects your grades, you are being deliberately miseducated. You are being cheated. The primary purpose of a real education is to teach a person to think for themselves. You're being taught to do precisely the opposite. You are being intellectually swindled. Still, as long as you get that piece of paper at the end of it, who cares, right? You can go and get a job at Google or Facebook or Twitter. You'll fit right in with all the other progressive, programmed human bots living the anti-American dream. You know, many Americans might not be aware of this, but theirs is the only country on earth where a person can express an opinion, any opinion, without fear of arrest. The reason for this, the only reason for it, is the First Amendment to the Constitution, whose 45 words are among the most important ever written in the English language. 
The First Amendment protects Americans from, among other things, the kind of unjust and tyrannical speech laws that have become the norm here in Europe, where the wrong opinion can literally send you to jail. So if I was an American, I would be paying close attention to the rapidly changing state of free speech in progressive Europe, and even closer attention to the health and integrity of the First Amendment, which is going to come under sustained attack from this generation of progressively miseducated halfwits. They're already trying to claim that so-called hate speech is not protected by the First Amendment, but of course it is, because the US Constitution was drawn up by men who were wise enough to trust freedom-loving people to settle their differences through argument and debate, and not through government censorship. Americans are fortunate that their country was born during the Enlightenment, when it was assumed to be self-evident that a free society is a healthy society. If the country was being born today, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights would look very different, and the First Amendment, if it existed at all, would be subject to all kinds of progressive weasel words, caveats and restrictions that safely nullified it European style. Right now it protects the last remaining flame of genuine free speech on this planet. And that's why it matters, not only to Americans, but to all of us. Because if that flame is ever allowed to die, the rest of us will have nothing from which to relight our torch, and it will be over. So you would think, therefore, that the vital importance of the First Amendment to global freedom would be prominently taught in American schools and universities as a matter of pride and as a matter of course. You would think that there would be constant reminders to students throughout their educational career of the unique liberties that they enjoy, thanks to the First Amendment, and you would think that students would come out of the education system determined to promote and defend the First Amendment and their own liberty against all comers you would think. If that were the case, and who knows, perhaps in a healthier parallel universe it is, this repressive anti-American social media political censorship of freedom of speech would not be happening. It wouldn't even be possible, because they wouldn't be able to find enough willing anti-American stooges to impose their cowardly police state puritanism and their rancid anti-American dream. It would be a matter of public shame as it should be now. But unfortunately, a progressive education turns people anti-American by instinct, and it makes them utterly shameless. It turns them into the kind of self-righteous imbeciles who would love to replace the First Amendment with Europe's ugly hate speech laws, and they're softening Americans up for that now through the education system. Kids are coming out of school with the idea that the First Amendment is an archaic white supremacist throwback, a dangerous anachronism, an impediment to progress that promotes hate. Its values are from a more primitive era, and it should be repealed for the sake of inclusion. And then these kids are going to university, where this crap is hammered into them over and over by subversive leftist professors determined to instill in malleable young minds their own poisonous anti-American dream, and in this, it seems they are succeeding. A whole generation has been quietly miseducated to distrust or even to despise its own freedom and to regard it as somehow immoral to uphold it. And we're seeing the fruits of that sabotage now with an internet that was meant to liberate us being used to monitor, censor and control us. They got us to come and drink at the well and now they've poisoned the well. And it has been well and truly poisoned. When I see university students, of all people, protesting against freedom of speech, it's like watching somebody cheerfully dig their own grave. And we've all seen countless examples on campuses all over America, not least in that progressive, insane asylum called Berkeley. But for me, the most telling incident was one that you may remember from a couple of years ago. It was quite well publicised when dozens of students at Yale University were persuaded to sign a petition to repeal the First Amendment because free speech can hurt people's feelings. Now, at the time, it was quite comical that more than 50 of these geniuses signed this thing in less than an hour, some with great enthusiasm. But when you stop laughing and reflect on the fact that so many students at a top American university, the cream of the crop, the leaders of tomorrow, 
genuinely don't understand how important the First Amendment is, how foundational to their entire uniquely free society, how essential for preserving uniquely their own undiluted personal liberty, it's hard not to feel some alarm for the future, and it's hard not to feel contempt for the education system they've come through and for the people who run it. The five freedoms protected by the First Amendment Yes, there are five, although I wouldn't necessarily expect too many students to know that. Freedom of religion, speech, the press, assembly and petition are essential components of a healthy society. Collectively, they should be an essential component of anything that calls itself a university education or even a basic education. We all know that prejudice is ugly, but censorship is worse because it doesn't make bad ideas go away. They simply fester and grow. Get them into the light where they can be examined, dismantled and ridiculed to death. You know, the way we used to do things before we all went insane. Human progress depends on liberty and the free exchange of ideas. That has been conclusively proven. It's the reason why Western civilization is by far the most advanced in human history, and it's why societies that practice censorship always lag behind. They stifle themselves from within. The First Amendment to the US Constitution is a written guarantee that that can never happen in America. Each of its five freedoms reflects in its own way the very important core principle that nobody should be silenced, that everyone should have their say. That is the oxygen of our civilization. To restrict it is to commit slow suicide. And you can come out of university with all the letters in the world after your name, but if you don't understand that, and if you don't, therefore, understand and appreciate the profound wisdom in the 45 words of the US First Amendment, you have not been educated. You've been processed. You've been cheated. You've been swindled out of your birthright. And now you're living the anti-American dream.